And welcome back to White Claw Wednesday. Wow, look at this. Just me, huh? This is episode 116. And I am um, doing this because Ryan is currently busy with wedding stuff and work stuff. You know, just, just you know, doing his thing. Oh man, and I'm struggling with this claw here. Yeah, so this is the first ever solo episode. And... Um, you know, I thought this day would come because I knew with the wedding coming up for Ryan that he would likely be busy either during the week before um, the wedding, like what we're in now, just a couple days away. Um, one more whole day before he gets married, actually, because this is Wednesday and tomorrow's Thursday and he's getting married on Friday. So I thought that was a, a chance. They thought there was a chance that I would have to do a solo episode, and I was looking forward to it because, um, well, I I talk to myself all the time, and that's what that's what this is. So, talking to myself today, and I'll probably be talking to myself again when uh, Ryan is honeymooning on his cruise, which will be I think he said a month after he gets married. So, some couples just uh, oh yeah, cheers to myself I guess. Some couples just take off right after they get married, uh, you know, in the car with the cans and the just married and all that stuff, and they go off and they do their honeymoon. Some wait a night, go the next day, two nights, whatever. Ryan's going with the month wait. Can't really remember why, but that's just the way it is. So we will have be back to, you know, I'm assuming, you know, Ryan and I, it's not like, because if he was doing the normal thing, like, oh, taking off for the honeymoon right after the wedding, then you'd probably have be listening to back to back episodes just me uh but be about a month in between be another four episodes or so with ryan and then i'll be back doing this again solo but i just really wanted to i didn't want to skip this week uh i wanted to jump on the opportunity to do the solo episode because i just well i mean a lot happened since our last episode that we you know spent focusing on zombies and renaming uh you know, Kylie Jenner's kid, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, one episode 116 here, I really just want to dive into, um, well, you know, the slap heard around the world, right? Will Smith slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars. Funny enough, I was at a, another wedding. Shout out Jacob, one of our, two, our two-time guests on the show, recently got married. I was at his wedding on Sunday when the Oscars was, and... Um, so I, I, f- I kind of first find out about the t- – well, I first find out about the slap through a group text, uh, and they didn't do a really a great job of like – that's the thing about text. When you're not – when you don't know exactly what a text is coming through, like what, what it's talking about or what it's, you know, referring to, you can easily l- lose complete control over like – where the hell is this conversation going? Like, what what are they talking about? So, I mean, they're obviously talking about, like, you know, Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. I know the Oscars are going on. But it's just such a crazy thing that through text only and without video and without someone explaining it to you in words, really impossible to put into your mind and figure out, like, oh, that's what, that's what they're talking about? Because I read it and I know the Oscars are going on and I just assume, like, oh, they're just making fun of a bit that happened during the Oscars where Will Smith pretended to slap Chris Rock or something. And, you know, there are, of course, people on the internet who think, like, oh, it's fake. And, yeah, I, uh, cool, you know. That they can, that, that, I, everybody has, it's like the blue dress, it's like, it's like the blue, black, or, you know, gold and black, whatever that dress, different color thing was. Or, like, the the moon landing is uh, fake or real, like, all. Was Epstein... Did he kill himself or was he killed? You know, like there's just like so many good conspiracies. And I, I just, I don't know. It's like, of course, when you have something as crazy as Will Smith walking on stage and slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars, people are immediately going to jump on both sides, real and fake. I personally am on the side of real, just based off all the the repercussions that have happened since in terms of, you know, Will Smith's apology, everybody giving their two cents on the topic. And basically that... <laughs> It seems to me that gen- anybody with a anybody with a mic in front of them is on the side of has been on the side of reality. It seems like to me, and that's the side that I'm on. I I think it was real. Obviously, it looked. I mean, oh man, imagine if it was fake though. 
you know, if it was, it'd still be just. And that's th- it, it, it's something that's just it's just so cool to me either way. I mean, not cool. Maybe that's not the right word. No, not cool. Um, just wow. You know, sometimes you're in a moment and you think even when you find out a mo- about a moment after the moment has passed, you still kind of sit in it for a second and you're just you're just. Well, not even for a second, but you keep going back to it. You keep thinking back to it, and you're like, "Wow, that happened! That happened!" Like, and the Oscars has, you know, had many of uh, interesting things happen. <laughs> well, the only one that really comes to mind immediately, like recently, is the whole Moonlight winning Best Picture when La La Land was announced, and the people who were accepting La La Land went up on stage, and they were like, "Oh, hold up, hold up!" And they pull out the card and they show, "Oh, it says Moonlight. You know, we didn't win." And then switcheroo and I was I was very into that because like I love both movies, but I thought that um, Moonlight was more deserving, just because of it's like I'd never seen anything like it, you know. And La La Land was you know a classic musical, and I've seen those before, but Moonlight was like oh my god, so that was really cool to see that. That was sort of a that was sort of a um, you know a night shaker upper that felt like it was the right thing in a way. You know, almost as if, okay, good. I was like, oh, La La Land won? And then it changed, and I was like, okay, well, that makes... But I mean, uh, but then there's all those people out there who, of course, are just heartbroken because, oh, I thought La La Land was going to win. I was involved in La La Land. And it's, you know, not the case. But this Will Smith slapping Chris Rock thing is different in the sense of where it... uh (coughs) Well, it wasn't at the end of the night. It was when uh, Chris Rock was presenting Best Documentary and which ended up going to, uh, I have the poster behind me, Summer of Soul, the Questlove uh, movie, and uh, documentary, I should say. <laughs> and that's just like one example of like one thing it kind of just dampered a little bit, you know. It's like Questlove should feel as if this is his moment in the sense when he's winning the Oscar and he's going up on stage like this is his, like, oh, this is this is about me right now, you know. But then something like that happens. Will Smith slapping Chris Rock, and then Questlove's on stage accepting his re- reward, uh, award, and he's just not him. But him and everybody else in the room are just thinking about, wow, Will Smith just slapped the shit out of Chris Rock, as you know, Chris Rock jokingly put it after he got slapped. Yeah, um, the slap heard around the world. I think that's a good way of describing it. And I I read that. Uh, the numbers for the Oscars were up. And I still low, they said, but they were up from last year. But still, I think it said second lowest still. Uh, second lowest in history in the sense of where, like, people are just, they're just not watching them anymore. I don't know. It's just, I wasn't, I wasn't even interested in the Oscars this year. And it wasn't, I mean, it was a little bit because I had to go to the wet, a wedding. Uh, but it was also just because I just, I don't know. I'm just, the awards have, I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what, I, I, hope, I hope I get it back next year, but I just didn't have that, that, that oomph to, 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 to watch all the movies, to get caught up, to like make a list of all the uh, uh, you know, nominees and just go down the list and be like, I want to see this, I want to see that. Because I've done that you know, many, many of the prior years where I've just, gotten really into just like seeing as many as I can that are nominated for the big big awards and and this year I just man yeah I just had no I I didn't I didn't seek out the Oscar winners and I think that's because I mean the Oscar nominees and I think that's because uh it's it's just become such a man it's like a I don't know every there's just always something to complain about you know or there's a new rule or and I I'm and and um yeah, I don't know. It just it just doesn't have the same doesn't have the same feel to me anymore. You know, they added like they made the like, and I think it all kind of started with when they uh, did the uh, expansion of the best picture category because it used to be five nominations, just like you know everything else pretty much, and then they changed it and they made it like oh you can have a maximum of, t- of ten. And if I can recall correctly, it was because of the whole, oh, the Dark Knight didn't get nominated in 2008 for Best Picture. It just had the Best Supporting. Oh, well, didn't I have other nominations, but it won the Supporting Actor Award for Heath Ledger. And a lot of people thought that it was deserving of a Best Picture nomination. 
and it didn't get one. And then I think it was just the year after that that they increased. I'm, I'm almost positive that it was the year after that that they increased the number where they're like, oh, there can be 10 now. But it was like can be. It wasn't like, a, oh, there has to be 10. Because I remember Avatar was after, because Avatar came out in 2009, Dark Knight came out in 2008, and Dark Knight didn't get nominated, and then I'm pretty sure they, I'm just going for I'm not even going to fact check myself on this, I'm not even, you can fact check me on this if you want to, but pretty sure the year that Avatar was nominated for Best Picture, because it made the most money ever at the time, was the year that uh, they increased the amount of Best Picture nominations, and that was just sort of the start of like, they just, I don't know, they... I, I just think when it comes to having an academy of people who work in motion pictures deciding on who wins these awards, I thought that was always the coolest part of um, the Oscars and that it was it was like it was really like peers recognizing peers in a sense, you know, people who had achieved, you know, greatness and success in the movie business were recognizing other people who had just done that exact thing. And I always thought that was the cool thing about it. And I, and I never thought they needed to really change anything, you know, in a sense of where I, it's like the, the changes they make are to make the movies that are recognized more diverse, which I, which I understand. And I totally am on board with, but I just don't know if the, I, it, it's funny to me that they do, and I know they, I know this, I, I know they try to keep the, do the same thing in the production of films and stuff. They try to, they're keeping it diverse ever since it seems like the whole Oscar's so white um, controversy back in 2016, uh, which uh, was when they had only white actors nominated in all the uh, best actor and best supporting actor and best supporting actress and best actress categories. And, uh, and I, I just think it's interesting because I think you could, I don't, I don't think you need to put those rules on the, um, on the account, on like the Oscars on, you know, the way they, I just think you put the rules on the production. You know what I mean? Like you just make more movies, you just make more movies about, you know, diverse characters from all walks of life. And that way you just naturally get more movies nominated that are fitting the rules you're forcing on your award show. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't need to make <laughs> you know, you don't need to make the award show super specific in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the great thing about movie is every single movie is 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 its own story with its own characters and you all I'm saying is like you, if you put like restrictions on what is allowed to get nominated you could have a movie that doesn't happen to fit your rules for nominations, but it is also really good. You know, like that, that can happen. Like that's, so that's what I think is, um, is, is, is where the Oscars is sort of like missing the mark and that they're not, they're not, there's no need for rules. You know, they, they could, they, you don't, you don't need to put late, you don't need to say we're doing this only. You know, you can just recognize good movies like good movies will come out with diverse casts and and characters that you've never seen before from just and, and that's just and that's 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 what's so awesome about movies. So I kind of went off on a tangent there, uh, basically just sort of on why the Oscars still wasn't that watched on a night when Will Smith slapped. Chris Rock and it's because they've I don't know they just sort of taken the fun out of it you know it's like when you make it so like it, you're recognizing greatness in movies you don't need to make it any more specific in that besides the cat you have your categories you know you got your categories that's all you really need you don't need to put like different specific rules on each category you really don't need to do that you know you just 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 recognize good movies just vote for the movies when you're a member of the academy, just vote for the movies that you think should be recognized. You don't need to make it some, you know, checklist. We don't need to be. We don't need to be doing checklists because then it becomes, it's like, then it's like a homework assignment. You know, then it's like I'm not making a movie. Then then I'm not making a movie that I naturally want to make. That this is like this is, or that I've gr come together with this great group of people to make. Like we're not, 
we're not trying to hit a checklist okay we're not we don't have a we don't have a printed worksheet assignment with all of like the do this do that do that we're trying to make something that we came up with and that we want to express in this way so to put some sort of rules on it just seems it, i don't know just like you already have the categories that's really all you need you're you're recognizing greatness in movies through specific categories you know like it like acting cinematography screenwriting directing it's just like it doesn't need to be like that it yeah exactly i mean but you know i i, I can't control that i just think that you don't need all those rules. And to go back to Will Smith slapping Chris Rock, there's a lot, I, I've seen a lot of different uh, takes about right thing to do or wrong thing to do. Which was it? And uh, I don't even want to like, it's tough. I, I can't even really necessarily say, uh, it's it's hard, it, it's, a, it's a tough it's a fence, you know, it's a, like anything, you know, you, if, you, if you're on one side of the fence or the other, but you can try to like sit on the fence, you can try to sit on the post, you know, as Dwight said, I can, you know, I can sleep on a fence, you know, the trick is to do it face down, post in my mouth, it's, it, uh, there's a lot of ways to look at it, and there's, there's the chivalrous way of standing up for your, your wife, there's the millions of people are watching, it's not right to slap someone in front of millions of people. There's the, wow, you went with a slap. I mean that that I, there's so like I mean hell, this is a fence that just has just so many. I mean there's a lot of different. I just actually I was I was lying when I said it's just one straight down fence with two sides. It's a <laughs> fence going every which way, and people are on every different side. And there's some sides that are closer and more similar. Some sides that are, you know, playing catch over the fence. There's other sides that are, you know, yeah, tossing, tossing insults back and forth. You know, just, uh, I'm being metaphorical here, but there's also the side of, oh, don't go, violence shouldn't be your first move, right? Violence, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be your first move. I heard on the radio from someone on AM570 which is a SoCal sports AM radio station which has some fiery hosts on it it's on late at night it's always a station I have on my radio when I don't feel like plugging in my phone one guy was acting like you know I don't have I can't even name the show I'm listening to that's what I love about this radio station is they're always talking about sports something I'm interested in and I leave it on. I don't really need to learn the names of the guys because they're just entertaining. And I'm I'm there for that. And it's usually quick, you know, little bits because if I'm doing a long drive, I got the phone plugged in, you know. So this guy on the AM570 radio station is basically implying that everybody knew Will Smith was going to win Best Actor for the King Richard movie. And when you hear that, I immediately jump and think, okay, well, wait, does does Will Smith know that? Like how, like how much of this Oscars is not like what you're presented through TV, you know? Like the people being like, oh, I didn't win, like the shocked faces. I mean, these are actors. They could easily know who's winning and who's losing, you know, and still just act I just nail the surprise or just nail the defeat, you know? That's what I think it's so funny when when uh, when social media covers or media covers the reactions of the losers post Oscars. They say, Oh, he looked really sad. He he looked happy. He looked pissed. Like they're just going through and it's just it, it's, it's funny to me because it's like, I mean, you just lost an award. I mean, can't we are you not allowed to have a range of emotions, you know? It's like, oh, he looks so pissed. Like, duh, he's pissed. He lost. You know? Or duh, he's happy because he knows that the winners did a better performance than he did. Like, or she did. There's just a lot of... But, like I'm saying, if 
everybody knows who's winning. And that would include Will Smith, I would assume. Like the radio host said, who apparently, he knows these guys. He says it with confidence. And he's on AM radio in my car. So I'm like, okay, I'm taking it as the truth. Because why not? Who cares? I take it as the truth. And I say to myself, Will, why are you going up on stage and slapping Chris Rock when you're about to win an award? Why, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? And also, you know what's even funnier about it? Forget if he knows about the award and whether or not he's winning it. Forget all that. So let's say he's not even nominated. Will's not even nominated. He's just there with Jada because date night at the Oscars, great time. He has a platform. Will Smith is Will Smith. I mean, he is. He's Will Smith. I kind of, it's like, it's hard. Will Smith to me is probably top five movie stars. If I, if I just had to just throw out five names, Will Smith's in my five, in my top five. He's, I mean, he's Will Smith. I can't, it's like, that's an, it's, it's, it's so cool. Yeah, I mean, he's, it's just his celebrity is so cool and I've always admired him, which is what sucks about the situation, you know. Because it's like now he's just, now he, he's always going to be associated with the slap. Or maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, people, you know, Mike Tyson bit off a boxer's ear and he went to prison and, you know, people are buying his weed now, you know? So uh, there's redemption. But, man, it's just just a bummer to see someone do that kind of move when, like, they can easily tweet, hey, Chris, my wife has a condition, medical condition, and she needs to shave her head because of it. So that joke wasn't cool and love for you to apologize. Or maybe not love for you to apologize. I don't know if, I don't know if you'd put it like that. But I, I'd, I'd, I'd like it. I don't know. All I'm saying is just the, 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 to go with the slap on stage at live at the Oscars and then to yell at him after you walk back. And then uh, it's just the whole thing is – Whoa, you know, whoa. And and to think about the amount of offensive jokes that Chris Rock has told in his career as, as a comedian. I mean, and as, as someone who's, you know, I don't like to call myself a comedian because I've only, you know, let's see, I've done 12, 6, 4, 6. I've only, I think I've only done open, I think I've done five five open mics in my lifetime. I think I did my first when I was 18, and I'm 24 now. So that's six years, five five times on stage. That's basically that's basically doing something on, like that's that's not. I'm not a comedian. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not a comedian, but I do think that as a comedian, when you're on stage telling jokes like Chris Rock was, there's got to be like a There's got to be something done before we go to violence, you know. And and I'm not even trying to say, Will, don't don't go to violence. I'm not I'm not even trying to, or or say any, but like if you're like insulted so much by a comic on stage, and I'm I'm not also I'm not trying to like tell you to go up and swing on him, you know. I'm not trying. I'm just trying to say there's not you don't imme- you don't start with that. You don't start you don't start with that. You don't you can't, I, you shouldn't start with that. You shouldn't start. I mean, you can start with that. Clearly, you can start with that. He started with that. People have started with that. I mean, uh, there's probably, I mean, poof, I wouldn't be surprised if your average comedian who, you know, puts, who is actually a comedian, has probably had people charge them on stage before. You know, handling hecklers and, you know, you know, trading jabs, you know, giving them a little insult back after they insult you. And it's all, but the, but to go to violence in a situation where you're attacking a comedian who's doing his job which is to tell jokes which are jokes so they're not supposed to be taken serious is uh, it's uh, it's all it's it's just it's going to be something where like most people are not going to be on your side and that's what i've found so far in just 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 reading about this wild slap is that it seems to me that the general opinion is that Will Smith shouldn't have slapped Chris Rock 
And that, I think, is the most, you know, big picture way of saying it, is to say, I think most people think that it was a bad idea to slap Chris Rock. And it's something that it's just like, uh, when when it comes to defending your loved ones, standing up for your family, that's 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 a topic that's gonna have a lot of opinions. Okay, so that's why I tread lightly when I try to like summarize most people's opinion. You know, I should say most people, the most most of the opinions of people with followings on the internet you know they seem to be the ones who are like eh, probably not a good idea to punch him you know and then you have people who defend will smith because oh he's standing up for his wife and it's like damn like it's hard like it's like hard like okay yeah like okay like yeah that's yeah totally like I I understand that argument. I understand that argument. And you can understand that argument when you see Chris Rock make the G.I. Jane 2 joke, directs it at Jada. They cut to Will and Jada sitting next to each other. Will is laughing at the joke. Jada does not look happy. You cut back to Chris. Chris is... I think Chris is seeing, like, I mean, I from the videos that I've seen, what I what I take it in as. Because I was actually, like I said, I was at a wedding. wasn't watching live broadcast. So I've seen everything post-live. And it seems like after that first cut, camera cut, to Will laughing, Jay looking mad, cuts back to Chris on stage. Chris sees the shift in emotion happening of Jada looking at Will and Will snapping into that, oh, she's, I got to defend her honor. I'm taking the stage. Chris says something about King Richard referencing the movie. Will's there because he's nominated for it. And then Will just walks in and just slaps him and then just walks away. And it, if you haven't seen it, which I, lo- I feel like if you're living under a rock, you haven't seen it. But if you're not living under a rock, then you have seen it. Oh, rock. Chris Rock. No pun intended. But, oh my, wow. I mean, and then to come back to your seat and then do the you know keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth and then chris is like yeah i'm going to you know i'm going to and then he says it again with just a little more anger and i can and i can kind of see why like people might like they get fake just because of how wild it was in terms of like switch from like laughing at a joke to just screaming at the comedian whose joke you were just laughing at to shut up I mean, it's like it, it. It seems like only a performance that someone with the caliber of acting like Will Smith could do, and that's where I think you've come with. That's where you come from with the whole like, oh, it's fake because it seems like it's too. It's too good, and it's it's like it's too entertaining. It's too like, it's too jaw dropping to not be set up, but it, it is. I mean, what? No, it isn't set up. No, no, I said that wrong. No, it it's real. That's what I meant. But it's so crazy, you might think it's fake. But I don't think it is, because it's not. Men's Warehouse. I'm transitioning, because, you know, I could talk about that forever. Because it's the slap heard around the world, and I could yeah, I could go on on that forever. But I want to say, Ryan, first of all, I miss you. And I think it's clear that this is something I can do. So if you're ever feeling like taking a day off besides your honeymoon, you know, we could, I could just, I could just do this again, but I got to say something, Ryan men's warehouse. They didn't print that. They didn't print the time that I was supposed to pick up the suit, but it's all good. It doesn't matter. It's cool. Cause it's a mile away from my house, but you know, I went there when they opened and they're like, Oh, the suit's not coming till 1230. And I was like, okay, cool. Then print that on the receipt. Uh, but that's, <laughs> Doesn't matter. Suit fits me. Beautiful. You know what? You know what really sucks. Like apparently, like that the sign that I just did for like the a okay, like like good job, like perfect, like way to go, like this good, like it. It's been ruined by the the uh, the crazy neo Nazis with like the white power, which sucks. They ruined it. 
they ruined a fun like hand gesture like to be like a hey, okay we're good all good here we're good it's perfect like it just sucks like they just i mean not everybody but it's just like now whenever it's like when i see it i was just like damn i just think it's like man some people might be taking it like that and that sucks but yeah men's warehouse like what are they doing and i'm only saying i'm only bringing it up because like I just I, I when you have back to back weddings when 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 you're when when you're a part of back see, planning a wedding is a lot of work okay it's a lot of work and it's a lot of money and I'm not I'm not trying to act like I'm over here lifting heavy loads here okay but being a part of a wedding two in within a week of each other like with four days in between each other let's see Monday Tuesday Wednesday. Yeah, four days in between each other. You have the compare and contrast ability between, you know, the ways you're getting your suits, so your rentals. So when Friar Tux, who I rented from for the wedding I just did on Sunday during the slap around the herd around the world, Friar Tux printed a pickup time for my suit. They printed the date and the pickup time. A window, not even just a window, a nice three-hour window. All I'm asking is men's warehouse. Can I can we start doing the pickup time windows on the receipts? Because clearly when I went in there and I asked the nice woman, "Hey, I'm here to pick up suit for my buddy's wedding. Here's the receipt." She goes in the back, comes back out a minute later, says, "Shipment with your suits coming in at 12:30 today." Uh, and then I look at the receipt for a good two minutes, and I'm scanning up and down, looking for 12.30 p.m. Where is it? Where is it next to 3.30, 2022, which is the pickup time? There's none. There's none. There's none. There's none. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. But you know what's funny? I got so angry about it. I got so angry about it. Not so angry about it, but angry enough about it to where, like, I was like, oh, ooh, I'm going to say something. I, I'm gonna like I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the employee I'm gonna be like you know Friars talk Friar talks they they put the time that you're supposed to pick up the suit. I decided not to. I got over it. I got over it. You get over little things. You get over little things, or you should get over little things because this was a this was a little thing. This was a little thing. I mean, the damn store is a mile away from my house. Okay, where I live, I should say, a mile away. Not, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna start ruining, I'm not gonna start making other people mad. I think that's what we gotta realize. We can't, you gotta treat others the way you wanna be treated. It really, man, life comes back to things sometimes, and that's one thing that it comes back to a lot of the time is you gotta treat others the way you wanna be treated. It's stupid, but oh, it's so good. And it's like, I, I can't remember who I recently heard say this, but they said like, man, if everybody treated others the way they wanted to be treated, we'd probably have no problems, which is crazy to think about, but I think it's true. I think it's true. Because nobody nobody wants problems. People don't want problems. People don't, people don't want problems. People, I mean, people really, I would say 98% of the time, I'd like to think it's that high, maybe 95, 6, 7, maybe around. But people do not want problems, okay? You have your, you know, I'm going to go comic book here, but you have your Joker types. You do. You're always going to have Joker types, you know? People that are just trying to fuck shit up. And that's like the 2 or 3% I'm not adding into my, you know, 90 whatever percent of people that don't want problems. So, yeah, I mean, we wouldn't really have, like, a perfect society if everybody was treating others the way they wanted to be treated. But I think it would make a huge improvement. And it, and it's something that I think is so simple that people forget about it a lot. They just forget to do it. You know, they just, it, it just, it because they get so upset in situations. And I think it, 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 it kind of switches from treat others the way you wanted to be treated to, to treat others the way you want them to feel like you that was bad that was not well said that was not well said that was not well said but i think i think what we do is like if we're pissed 
we decide to make someone else just as pissed as us instead of just, you know what, no. And letting it go and just allowing only one party to be pissed. Because usually when, you're, when, when you get mad at something, there's usually, you can usually take it out on something. Which is never, and it doesn't even matter if it's a person, or if it's a if it's an inanimate object. Whenever you try to transfer your feeling of negativity onto something, usually bad stuff is going to affect the thing. It, it, bad stuff's going to happen to the thing you're putting your negativity on. It's like the time. This is a great example. I love. I'm just going to put myself on blast just so we can realize what I'm talking about, I unplugged my PlayStation 4 from the back when it was running. Like, I'm talking, like, where, like, the plug goes into, to the, like, you got, you got your, you got your two ends of the cord that gives your PlayStation power, okay? You got your one end of the cord that plugs into your outlet in your wall at home, okay? And then you got your other end of the cord, your white claw, that plugs into the back of the PlayStation 4. Now, if you have to choose... I don't suggest either one as a method of taking power from your PS4 and turning it off to unplug from either spot. Okay, I recommend neither. But I sometimes, if not a lot, have the same issue that I'm talking about where it's like I get a feeling of negativity, of anger, and I want to put it onto the person or object or thing that has given me that feeling. I want to just be like, all right, you take it too. We're both going to be here. Both going to be pissed together. Both going to be screwed. Both going to be damaged, whatever you want to call it. And that happens sometimes. Sometimes technology doesn't work the way you want it to, and it really grinds your gears it, because it's like, damn it, aren't you made to work? And you're not working? I'm mad now. So now I'm going to I'm gonna unplug my PlayStation. Now there were times where I did it, where I was plug, I was I was unplugging from the wall, okay, from the wall, wall spot. Survival. We lived to tell another day. I turn on my PlayStation. It says to me, "Hey, PlayStation wasn't turned off properly last time. Don't do it again." I can't tell you how many times I did it. I don't know how many times I did it. I'd say definitely less than five, maybe two, maybe three. I don't know. Point is, I didn't learn my lesson because I didn't do the. I didn't do the real. One with the real consequences. I was unplugging from the wall. I wasn't plugging from the back. Unplugging from the back of the PS4. And there was one time where Call of Duty, the servers were down, and I wasn't taking it as like, oh, this is a problem that is affecting everybody. This is Call of Duty's fault. I was getting very specific because I'm looking at a PlayStation that's not letting me play, and it's pissing me off. And I'm like, fuck you, PlayStation. You're done. So I fucking go to the spot where I'd never gone before, the back of the PlayStation, not the wall. Not the house wall with the outlet. Not there. I'm talking the PlayStation itself, and I rip the power cord out. I just rip it out. And the best part is, like, I was, like, mid-load, too, you know. Like, since the servers were all messed up, I kept, like, trying to, like, log on. So I kept getting, like, long loading screens and then loading errors. And I got a loading screen that was too long, and it just set me over the edge. And I yanked, and I bricked my PlayStation. And I had to get, you know, the awesome one and only tech expert, Luis, who made our little logo that you see on our YouTube channel of Ryan and I as kids sitting on the white claw. So shout out Luis. He fixes my PS4. He brings it back to life. Now, in a situation where I don't have Luis, man, this thing is now a paperweight. And my, and my actions have the worst consequences. But this is what I'm talking about. This is what I mean. It's like... We need to, like, not only do we treat others the way we want to be treated, but we need to treat inanimate objects the way we want to be treated. Because we forget that we forget that. And we start, we, we, we just try to, I'm pissed, you're going to be pissed too. No. No. Don't, don't ruin other people's day. So I decided, I'm not going to say anything to this person working at Men's Warehouse. To the people at Men's Warehouse, I'm going to be nice just as nice as I was when I came in two hours earlier. I'm not going to say anything when they ask me how my day is, which they did. I'm going to say it's good because it is. Because it is. Because it's just a tiny little problem that doesn't need to be <sighs> fussed about, you know? It just, no. Ryan and I talk about perspective on the show a lot. And to go back to the slap heard around the world, 
Will Smith understands this himself, and he lost a little perspective in that moment. He had a right to stand up for his wife. Goddamn right he did. Her medical condition is being made fun of. She looks uncomfortable. That's his job as a husband. doesn't matter if she's cheated on him or he's cheated on her or they've said bad marriage for life together as a joke. None of that ma- None of that matters. None of that matters. It doesn't. Okay? But, Will, you didn't need to slap Chris. You didn't need to slap Chris. You could have just explained to him how you felt. But it's okay. It's okay. Because, again, you know, you're Will Smith. You're good. You apologize. We'll forget about it. We'll forget about it. That's 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 the. I say treat others the way you want to be treated. I do. I do. But that's the thing about the world we live in is that it's like it 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 can get crazier. It can get crazier. It can get better. It can get crazier. It can go a lot of different directions. And Will slapping Chris Rock was just another direction it went it's going to go another one pretty soon a new day right all I'm saying Will I'm still going to watch your movies when I want to and I'm still going to freaking say thank you for not doing Django because I think Jamie Foxx was perfect for that role but uh, you would have been good too bro You, Will you would have killed it and Chris I really, I, I, Chris, you, you handled it the best way you could have, really. I mean, I can't, really, Chris, like, you, <laughs> you really did. Shout out, shout out, Chris, handling it well. A lot of ways to take that. Probably had to answer a lot of questions about why didn't you take that a different way. Because Chris had perspective in that moment. Chris had perspective. <laughs> Chris thought about, his beautiful house, his millions of dollars, his lovely family, his career. And he was like, you know, no. I, you know, Will forgot. Will forgot about that. Forgot about that. Which, hey, happens when, you know, the woman you love, your soulmate, what I mean, I don't know how Will, what, what Will calls Jada, but hey, man, I... Certain things are just, they're just, they're going to push people over the edge. And hey, I can't, I'm not going to try to get in Will's head about why that happened or anything. All I know is that that he, I think in that moment, he just lost a little perspective. He just sort of forgot what was, what the situation was. It's not worth it, Will. You don't need to slap him. Don't need to slap him. Just tell him he's wrong. Tell him you're hurt. Tell him to apologize. Tell him not to do it again. Tell him to watch his mouth. A lot of options. Slapping him was an option. It was an option. It was clearly an option. You made it an option. But it didn't didn't have to be. Like I said, I mean, I could talk about this forever. And also, I'll probably talk about it some more with Ryan next episode. Um, and uh, I could go on forever. Fuck it, I'm going to just go a little. Well, yeah, I'll just go. I don't know. Suns are going to win the championship. I'm just going to say it now. I just wanted to talk a little NBA before I got going here, okay? I just wanted to focus on some fun stuff. Well, actually, everything I've been talking about has been very interesting and fun for me, but just something simple, something like sports, you know? Dribbling, putting the ball in the hoop. Suns are doing it better than anybody this year. I'm so proud of my team. I'm so proud of my team. Anybody who knows me knows I've been rocking with them since I was 10. It's been a long time. Became a fan in 08 when they first got Shaq. Steve Kerr, current coach of the Golden State Warriors, was the general manager at the time. He acquired Shaq in a trade. Shaq started wearing number 32, which I'm looking at the Amari poster I got in my room. Amari Stoudemire used to wear number 32. Shaq came to the team in 08. Amari switched to one as a respect, I'm assuming, to Shaq. It's like, hey, you know, you're Shaq. The Diesel, take the damn 32. Take what number you want to wear. And uh, so he took number one. 
And uh, so I have a poster with Amari Stoudemire where he's dunking with 32, but I have a little kid's jersey from when I went to my first game of Amari Stoudemire's jersey with another one. Point is, when I first started liking them, that was sort of like, that was kind of their, they they had reached a peak with Steve Nash and his back-to-back MVPs and Stoudemire and Mike D'Antoni and stuff. And then they acquired Shaq. And no offense to Shaq, but Shaq was on the, the you know, the other side of his prime. And pretty much when they were, when they acquired Shaq, like right when I started watching the team, like that was no, in 08, that was sort of their, those last couple seasons because they lost to the, they ended up losing to the Lakers in the 2010 Western Conference Finals. So those first few years of me being a fan, 08, 09, 010, 010, 2010, sound like Cam Brady, Cam Brady 012, but I had to go for a long time. 11 year drought 10 year 11 year 11 year 10 or 10 or 11 10 or 11 years can't remember which number 10 or 11 years no playoffs shitty team every year so it's really cool to see last year we lose the bucks in the finals that hurt awesome to see us do that though and now this year best record in the nba by a long shot we got home court for all the playoffs we got you know a healthy team knock on wood i got my awesome devin booker jersey I'm so ready. It's going to be awesome. Oh, man, I'm excited. I'm excited. But anything can happen. Any given Sunday, but it's not football. It's basketball. Who knows? It's going to be a great time. Also, March Madness, you got your Final Four. Duke, North Carolina facing off against each other. <laughs> the other the other matchup I can't even think of right now. All I'm, I'm just excited to see Duke versus North Carolina because – this is Coach K's last season. Coach Shashevsky, coach of the Duke Blue Devils. He recently passed John Wooden, a uh, famous coach at the UCLA Bruins. You s- you recently passed John Wooden for most Final Four appearances, also like most wins or something like that. Basically, he's like passing John Wooden. Like he's becoming statistically the greatest head coach and a lot of think the greatest head coach in college basketball, uh, men's college basketball. And uh, – yeah, I just I'm so the other the other game I'm not even really I, I don't really know I don't really know but yeah it's sort of gonna be like a final it's gonna be a great final four because you know one of the games is gonna be like pff, as big as as big as a championship and then you're gonna get another game after that uh, and I should know the other two teams but I don't and I guess I can I guess I could just look it up right now and keep keep blabbering about how Coach Shashevsky is could end with a national championship I mean there's really nothing better than retiring with it with a ring in your last season that's as that's as sweet as it gets really because like you because whenever you whenever you stop playing a sport whether like no matter in what way like you just stop playing the last game you have whatever that result that's your last game so did you end on a win or did you end on a loss and then there's seasons where you're not even making the playoffs so you you end on a win but then you had a shitty season so it's like all i'm saying is it's i'm assuming every single player's fantasy uh, and every professional athlete's fantasy to uh to win a championship and retire you know just sail off into the sunset kind of like Peyton Manning did like Andrew Whitworth left tackle for the Rams offensive line this year after the Rams won the Super Bowl um oh oh and then Ray Lewis Ray Lewis won that won that Super Bowl with Joe Flacco against the Niners and Kaepernick that was the Harbaugh versus Harbaugh coach Super Bowl where the power went out Ray Lewis got to retire after that, so it's just a it's just a really cool way to to go out with a championship. Oh yeah, so Villanova and Kansas is the other game. So you got Final Four: Villanova, Kansas, North Carolina, Duke. All I can say is, all four of those teams, no matter who the two that are left playing for the championship, it should be a great game because I, I I've seen all these teams play throughout the tournament and they all looked they they all look like equal matches and North Carolina did beat Duke by 10 plus points in Coach K's final home game at Duke in the regular season, uh, which was a big thing because Duke was favored and all that stuff. So, and North Carolina, I'm going to root for them because they're the highest seed left because you got Villanova, they're a second seed. You got Kansas, they're the last one seed. You got Duke, they're a two seed. North Carolina's sitting at eight. They're the, they're the most Cinderella of the options. And hey, they made Duke look pretty, pretty, uh, pretty beatable in coach K's final home game so it, it, it'll be good and and Villanova has that number two that can just whew, really just I mean he can hit a three like when you're least expecting it so 
And Kansas, they're number one powerhouse. You know, they they're they're built they're built for it. So yeah, gonna be gonna be a good Final Four. And I think I've blabbered on for enough. So hey, this is episode one sixteen. White Claw Wednesday, the first ever solo run here for Frank. It's a great time. I like talking about myself in the third person. I like talking to myself. And yeah, we're going to have a few weeks here of you know good episodes of Ryan and I back together. And then Ryan's going to do his vacation. I don't know how long it's going to be, but who knows? You might have one. Well, you're definitely going to have one. Might have two more solo episodes. Oh, yeah. So. Until episode 117, I've been Frank. This has been White Cloud Wednesday. Thank you for listening, commenting, and subscribing. And as you know, we're on the road to a thousand, so f- tune in whenever you uh, you know get the chance. Love you. Peace out.